you hear about the mainstream media, the mainstream liberal media, liberal media specifically switching up on their on their masters. It's a good day. So this would be why the Biden family might be a little bit upset with CNN at the moment. New reporting: the President Biden's family is encouraging the president to stay in the 2024 race, defying calls for him to step aside following his alarming performance on Thursday's in Thursday's debate. The family is meeting at Camp David. It's an alarming performance. That's that is a very specific choice of word. <laughs> alarming performance. Also, elder abuse. Tonight, this is part of a planned gathering that was scheduled before the debate, we're, we're told. And the message out of that meeting, at least for now, appears to support to be support for the president to continue pursuing a second presidential term. CNN's Priscilla Alvarez joins us now in Washington. Priscilla, what's your latest reporting at this hour? Well, the president is huddling with his family following the immediate fallout of his debate performance on Thursday night, and Biden advisors are telling CNN that his family is encouraging him to stay in the race and supporting him and expressing that support, including Hunter Biden and the president's grandchildren. These advisors also saying that the conversations have been focused on how the family can help the president and not whether he should reconsider his candidacy. Of course, all of this, all of these conversations follow uh, what has transpired since Thursday night's debate, as there have been calls for the president to withdraw from the race, including in uh, editorial boards, as well as all corners of the Democratic Party. Now, the president himself has also been collecting data anecdotally and through public polling as he, too, tries to assess what uh, what folks are feeling across the party. And that has been a deep concern. Panic has certainly set in. Donors have been racked with anxiety over the president's poor performance on Thursday night. Now, the president, of course, did participate in a fundraising blitz over the weekend where he, too, conceded that Thursday night was not his best debate performance, but said that he would continue to fight and that he wanted to stay in the race. But the president and his campaign are certainly, Allison, under great scrutiny tonight. And what we know so far from the huddle that he had with his family mm -hmm. at Camp David today is that he has the support of his family and their encouragement. Of course, that mm -hmm. is no small thing. These are key players uh, in President Biden's orbit and have been crucial. Let's be clear. Y'all not good family members. He does not have good family members. That man said we beat Medicare. We finally beat Medicare. And y'all like, yeah, he's good to go. Go ahead and put him back out there. That's crazy. <laughs> I, I pray my family. I pray my family never does me like this, man. In a lot of his decision making when it comes to running for president. Priscilla, thank you very much for all of that reporting. We're joined now by CNN senior data reporter, Harry Enten. He uh, was here to run the numbers. So Harry, do we have new poll numbers for President Biden post-debate? We, we do, you know, CBS News, YouGov conducted some polling post-debate. We can compare it to the pre-debate numbers. And the bottom line, Alice, it's not any good. It's not any good. Look at this. Voters who say that Biden has the mental health to be president. It was just 35% pre-debate. Look where it's dropped to now post-debate. 27%. How about that he should be running for president? It was 37% pre-debate. It's now 28%. I have never seen numbers this bad for an incumbent president during my lifetime. I mean, that mental health to be president, just 27%. You might say, okay, you know, that's low, but a lot of people thought Biden was too old back in 2020. These numbers look nothing like this back in 2020. These numbers were bad. Do you know how insane it is, guys, that this is even a conversation? Do y'all understand how I'm saying this is? I feel like sometimes when we talk about Biden's mental state, it you know we it, it's contextualized. Like man, that man is really he, he shouldn't be doing anything, let alone running the country. Yeah, that's cool. But it's the fact that we allowed this to happen. Well, we didn't allow it to happen, but you know what I'm saying. Like the country as a collective, that there there are people in powerful places who see 27% of the country, or at least in this poll, don't even believe this man has the mental capacity to run for president.
And everybody's like, okay, you know, that's that's not cool, but hey, man, we can work with that. No, 27% of the country, which, duh, if anybody watched the debate or literally the last three years, 27% of the country is like, this man is not all there. And yet we still have politicians that are like, but Trump. When the question should really be, but why do we only have these two options? But why has the system put us in this predicament? But why are we validating this system by pretending like these two options are legitimate? When I say by pretending like these two options are legitimate, I'm saying we have a system that's put in place that has ensured that only two people can make the debate stage. Why, are our, why is our debate stage controlled by CNN or Fox News or MSNBC or CB, excuse me, CBS? Why is our debate stage controlled by private corporations? Because y'all know that it was CNN. For, at first, it was the Democratic Party and the, the Republican parties that worked together to choose the debate requirements. Now it's private corporations separately deciding what those qualifications are, and those qualifications can move every single time. And because of that, we have a system that allowed one guy who... You know, this man got a bunch of felony charges. A lot of them are legitimate. Okay, I'm willing to admit that the the, the that um, Biden is using the executive branch, the judicial system that belongs to the executive branch, to prosecute his political opponent. I'm I'm fully aware of that. But hell, all I'm saying is, a black man can't get away with that, right? The average person, they were trying to take Bernie out once upon a time because his wife got in some trouble at, a, a, at Vermont, at a college in Vermont that she used to work at, right? Let alone be able to get away with fel multiple felonies, even the accusations of such, right? And then you got Joe Biden who's senile. <laughs> and then not only is he senile, but his family, Hunter, is also with legal problems that are directly connected to his campaign that are more legitimate that he's been prosecuted for and it's still undergoing investigation for it. That is what our system, so like, how did we get here? Why, why is this even a conversation? It is insane that we're like, man, but does he still have a legit chance to win? Does he have a legit chance to still run the country? 27% of the people polled say this man is not there anymore. His body is present, but his brain is on vacation and we do not have an ETA in which his brain will return. And we are still having a comment. It's bizarre to me. It's like the world is just like lulled to sleep. Well, no, nah, I can't even say that because I will say that I was kind of surprised at the reactions the next day for the debate. There were people that don't even comment on politics that were like, holy shit, I'm just not realizing how crazy this shit is. Yeah. We try to tell y'all. Try to tell y'all. Let's watch the rest of this video. Bad already. And the truth is, Allison, they have gotten just considerably worse, even in just a few days after that first presidential mm -hmm. debate. Harry, do we have polling yet that suggests that voters want a different candidate? Yeah, this is the whole question, right? If it's not President Biden, then who could it be on the Democratic side? And the truth is, there are no easy answers. You know, I went back and looked at the polling versus Donald Trump for a bunch of different Democrats and been suggested. Gretchen Whitmer, Gavin Newsom, Kamala Harris. Look at this. They all trail Donald Trump. So the idea here that we're somehow going to get this magic bullet, that there's somehow going to be some Democrat who can beat Donald Trump easily, I just don't see it in the numbers. At this particular point, if Joe Biden takes on Donald Trump, he's trailing. If there's mm. another Democrat who runs against Donald Trump, they too are trailing. Perhaps you want to make the argument you bring in another Democrat who isn't as well known as Joe Biden, who univer has universal name recognition, and maybe they could change the numbers. But the fact is, any Democrat who entered the race right now, at least among those that are being suggested by a bunch of folks, they would all enter the race at this particular point as an underdog to former President Donald Trump. But Harry, are those numbers old numbers? So... Um, I feel like that's one of those duh moments, right? I don't know why we're pretending like Trump wasn't popular. I, it's weird to me that they do this. <laughs> we, Y'all knew this. Y'all knew this when you elected Joe Biden the first time. Y'all knew this when y'all effectively cheated 
to make him the president, right? To make him the Democratic nominee. You knew this. You knew that Trump was the most popular incumbent in incumbency history. And instead of setting the stage to, you know, like, like, cause, cause, cause if the biggest threat is Donald Trump and you're worried about that, then set the stage so you can have whoever wants to be president and, uh, whoever has the best campaign, best policies, most popular policies, let them have a legitimate chance to win. And then you can do whatever, cause this is the democratic party. You can do whatever you want to after that. We know that y'all love to literally change the rules at the last minute in order to get the result you want. And it's almost like, once again, ladies and gentlemen, they don't care about beating Donald Trump. Right? That's what it seems like. It looks like we're at the point, once again, that they're realizing, oh, man, everybody's paying attention again because Donald Trump is involved. And it is more about getting ratings <clears throat> in some instances. But on the other side, it's about having a boogeyman. But the problem is you have a lot of Democrats now who are afraid that they're going to lose their races because John, uh, Joe Biden is that bad. Joe Biden is that bad. But Gavin Newsom has never and ever been more popular than Donald Trump. OK, Kamala Harris shouldn't have even been the VP pick. It's no surprise to anybody. She she wasn't even kind of the most popular in her party, let alone the most popular in the country. OK. Uh, Gretchen Whitmer, I don't know why her name keeps getting thrown out there. Nobody likes her. And she killed a bunch of old people. She put a bunch of COVID patients in an old folks home, in a nursing home. <laughs> so that she can get more money from the federal government during the pandemic. I don't even know why she's on that list. Because once that gets put out there again, she's screwed. So I don't know why that she, I don't know how she made the list. Okay. Like, you all knew this. So what I believe will likely end up happening, like I've said time and time and time and time again, it'll be Hillary. It's set in the state, like, look at these names, guys. These names don't work. They don't have the name recognition. They can't compete against Trump. They can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this man. And, you know, Hillary come out of nowhere. But we got somebody who can save the day. And low baby Jesus, if they get if, if the Democrats get a chance, y'all, to run a white woman with a black quote unquote black woman against Donald Trump. Oh my God. Y'all think they wouldn't jump on that, bro? You know, Democrats, they don't run elections. They write movie plots. That's that's literally how they campaign. What would what would a good movie plot look like? <laughs> and that's how they campaign. That's usually how they make their decisions. So I just found it interesting that when, when uh, uh, Eric said that the, the Democrats are, or excuse me, the Biden campaign specifically is pissed right now. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. CNN has said, yeah, we're not. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. We can't. Remember, CNN got bought out. This, ain't, this is not the same CNN from last election. This is not even the same CNN from a few years ago. Right? This is CNN. They're like, look, man, <laughs> we together, man. But like, if, if, it, if it stand between us and getting money, we got to go. We got we to gotta go our separate ways. But we still with you. We together, but we separate. You know what I'm saying? We're separate, but equal. <laughs> 